When submitting exercises in this course, you are required to either embed artwork in a discussion or submit project files using a .zip file. In this video, I will demonstrate the steps to create a .zip file, to upload files to a file storage website like Google Drive, and then properly embed artwork in a discussion thread or submit a .zip for grading. Before I get started, I would like to preface by saying that Google Drive is not a requirement for this course. You may use any file storage website like Microsoft 365 or Dropbox. You can also upload files directly to Canvas. I just recommend Google Drive because in the long run, you'll have easy access to your files and it's easier to upload or embed images using Google Drive than it is some of those other file storage websites. So to get started, you need to have files to be able to upload. So I have created a folder on my computer and I am going to use a web file format, in this case a JPEG, and a .zip file. Before I get started, I want to show you how to create a .zip file. If I open the .zip on a Mac, it's as simple as double clicking. On a PC, you'll have to figure out what the settings are on your computer, but usually it's right click, send to, and then uncompress. When you uncompress a .zip file, it will reopen. And in this case, I compressed a folder, so it uncompressed into a folder, and then I can see everything that's inside the folder. If we wanted to create a, not, a new .zip file, you can do that by selecting some files and right clicking and choosing to compress. On a PC, it's slightly different. It will be right click, send to, and then compress your file. When you select files and you compress them, it will still put them into a folder, but because you didn't create the folder, it will just say archive. Let's trash that. If you first put them into a folder like this world cities folder, and I'm going to rename it so that it's not the same as the existing uh, zip file, you can place them in a folder and you can name the folder. And when you right click and choose to send to compress file or on a Mac, just compress, it will create a dot zip file. And the file name will be the same as the folder. The, the pros and cons of using dot zip files are that it puts everything inside your folder into one file. So if you have to attach it to an email or upload it to a website like Canvas or Google Drive, you only have one file to upload. A downside is that it just duplicated your files. So these ones are copies and you no longer need them. You only need your .zip because you could always uncompress it and it will open it and show you that there's a folder inside and now you have the folder. So be careful when creating .zips and uncompressing them. Make sure that you don't make 50 copies of something by accident or you can do that. Just make sure you delete the copies when you're done. So for this demo, I am going to use one web file format and one zip file. The first option for submitting artwork is to do it through Canvas. So let's walk through it together. You will usually submit your files either on a discussion thread called a skills practice like I have open on this page, or you will attach them or link to them when submitting a project. Let's do the project first because I think that's a little bit easier and it's a little more straightforward. So when submitting a project, I'm going to put this in student view so you can see pretty much what, what you'll see on your end. Um, not sure why I got confetti for just starting a project. Uh, you can go to the page, you'll read through the assignment, you'll do what it says, and when you're done, you will end up with a .zip file. To submit that file, you can hit start assignment in the top right hand corner and then the default option is to upload a file. So you'll choose the file, you'll find wherever you saved it, and you'll select open. Once you select open, do not forget to then submit the assignment. Some of the files in our course will be quite large, so it might take a few minutes for that to upload. Don't leave the website, um, don't close out, give it time. You also want to make sure that you don't try to submit one minute before the deadline. Give yourself an hour as a buffer as the due date is approaching. While we're waiting for that to upload, let's go to the discussion. When you submit a discussion, you will read through the instructions and you will follow what it says to do. And at 
at the very bottom of the instructions, so directly below where the instructions end, there will be a reply field that you click to start your own post. Do not scroll all the way to the bottom and reply at the bottom of the page. If you do that, you may be replying to uh, one of your classmates' posts. So instead of creating your own post, you're creating kind of a sub post under their post. So use the very first reply field, and then you get a text box where you can enter all of your text responses. Um, and then when you're ready, you can insert artwork. When you are submitting artwork for view by the class, it should be embedded, it should not be linked to. I don't want your classmates to have to download files. So in order to get the JPEG into the discussion, it one has to be a web file format so it can be displayed on the web. So you'll use a JPEG or a PNG file. And then two, just put your cursor wherever you want it to go and make sure it's blinking. Once it's blinking, you can add it by choosing insert, image, and then you can upload the image directly to Canvas. If you do nothing else and you select a picture and hit submit, it will embed into the post that you're making. You can click on it to change image options and when you're ready you can hit post reply. It's relatively straightforward, but it doesn't always work smoothly. If you're uploading really big files or many files at a time, you may receive an error that the operation has timed out or that it's not processing. Um, for that reason, I recommend the Google Drive option that we'll do next. But before we get there, let's finish. A, let's go back and finish submitting our .zip. Once you are done submitting, the screen will refresh, and on the far right hand side you will get confirmation that you've downloaded your file. If I leave student view I can show you what that looks like on my end. I go to my grade book to grade I will see that there's a new submission and then the post on the left hand side shows me what you what you have submitted. It's a .zip file and if I come over here I can download your .zip for grading. The second option for embedding artwork in a discussion and uploading files for uh, to submit projects is use Google Drive. And in order to show you Google Drive, I need to put my screen into incognito mode uh, because I already have Google accounts, but you don't have to do that. So open a new tab on, on, in your, on your computer in the internet and go to drive.google.com. It's important to note that if you have a Gmail account or any other Google service, you already have a Google Drive account, so you do not need to make a new account. If you don't have a YouTube or a Gmail or any other Google type account, you'll go to drive.google.com and look for an option that says go to Google Drive. The page changes periodically, but here it says go to Drive. When you're redirected to Google Drive, it will ask you to sign in, but if you don't have an account, you need to skip over that and select create an account. And then I am going to make it for myself. I'm not going to actually make it, but it takes about 30 seconds to fill this out. When you're done, you, it, you'll get a confirmation that you have created your account, you have a password, and then you can go to any Google service like Gmail, and you can use that new username and password to log in. Once you have an account for our course, you need to go back to drive.google.com and you'll go to Drive but this time you'll have a username or password so you'll log in with that. I'm going to use the username and password that I use for all of the coursework for this course and sign in. Once you do that the first time, the next time you go to drive.google.com and I don't know if it's going to work because uh, I'm in incognito mode, um, but it should redirect you directly to Google Drive instead of that starter page. Once you have a Google Drive, I recommend at the very least create a folder for our course. So in the top left hand corner, hit new and then folder. I already have a folder for our course called Art 1200 InDesign Software. So I'll just call this one Art 1200 so that it's different. And then everything that you do for our class should go inside that folder. So you can double click on it and go inside. You can organize this however you want. You can make a new folder for every module that we work on. You can make one that's for projects, one that's for notes, one that's for for different things, however you want to structure it. At the very least, you should have a folder for our course. 
Once you have a folder and you know where you want to upload your files, you can upload them by hitting new in the top left hand corner and choosing file upload, or you could drag them and drop them onto that circle in the middle of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and grab both the JPEG and the zip file at the same time and upload them. Once they've uploaded, and it will take longer for the .zip file because the file size is bigger, um, you can share the link to your files. To do that is straightforward. You select the file, and on the right-hand side, there's a little link, and if you hover, it will say this is the Get Link button, and if you do that, it will give you a link to your file. However, if you read it carefully, it will say, here's the link, you can copy it, but it's restricted, and only people that you have added, like their email account, um, can see the file. So what you need to do is change the privacy settings from restricted to anyone with the link and then you should make them a viewer. There are other options but you shouldn't use the editor one because you're going to be granting them the power to edit your file. So you just want them to be able to see your file. Then when you have changed the privacy settings you can then copy the link and now you can you can share this link with with anybody that you want to share it with. So if we come back to the discussion, if I make a new post, I could paste that URL in the post. If you do this option, make sure you hit the space bar so that the link becomes blue and clickable. And when you make your post, students can still see your file, but they'll have to click on the link. It will open in a new tab, and then you'll be able to see the picture. I expect you to embed artwork on the discussions. And so if you're having a hard time embedding, I will allow the URL, but the expectation is that it should be embedded. Let's go back to Google. Now that we have the .zip file, you can't embed a .zip file on a website or in a discussion because it's not a web file format. So your only option for sharing the .zip is to select the file click the get link button, pause and say, I can't share it yet because I need to change the restrictions from restricted to anyone with the link and I need to make sure they're a viewer. Now you can copy the link. So if for some reason you had to share a .zip file as part of your discussion, your only option if you're using Google Drive is to share it as a link and that's okay. If you decide to share it as, let's uh, go to student view here, if you decide to use the Google Drive to submit your .zip files for your projects, you'll follow the same steps to submit your project. You'll go to the project page, hit submit assignment or start assignment, whatever it said. But this time, instead of using the default option where it says file upload, there's an option that you could use text entry where you could paste the URL. If you do this, you press the space bar. There's also an option for website URL, and you'll just simply paste it, and then you'll hit submit. I know that I'm having you use Google Drive, but do not actually use the Google Drive tabs. You don't need to for our application. So just either use the text entry, give me the URL, or use the website URL and hit submit assignment. If we leave student view, I can tell, show you how that might look differently to the instructor's view but it's still accessible to the instructor. So now I can see that the first submission was a .zip file and this is how I would see it and download it. If you choose to use Google Drive or any other file storage website, um, I will get an option that says you have given me a link and I will click on the link and then it will take me to Google Drive and then I will hit download. I know it's maybe a step or two more for me as the instructor, but either option is perfectly okay. A benefit of using Google Drive is that your zip file is now saved forever on your Google Drive, so if you need to access it for any reason, it's there. The last thing I want to show you is the thing that's the most complicated, and that's if you want to use Google Drive to embed images in a discussion. It takes two extra steps. So instead of selecting the image and getting a shareable URL link, we need to get an embed code and to do that you double click on it has to be something that can be embedded you double click on the file if for some reason uh, so there we go uh, and it will open if for some reason you double click on it and you get an error that says you can't open this file format just right click and choose preview it will do the same thing 
Once you've opened the image and it's kind of separate on its own, go to the far right hand corner and hit the three dots. There is an option towards the bottom that says open it in a new window. Do that and it will look exactly the same. And even though it looks exactly the same, now if you go back to those three dots, instead of opening a new window, the option at the bottom of that flyout will say embed item. You'll get an embed code, which you can then, I'm going to do command or control A to select all, and then command or control C to copy. I can copy the embed code, and when we go to a discussion on in Canvas, this is not applicable to um, submitting projects. This is only for discussions. When you hit the reply field to make your own post and you put your cursor and you make it blank wherever you want the image to be, you can then select insert, but instead of image, you're going to come down to the bottom and choose embed code. That will give you an area where you can paste the HTML code that you just copied from Google and hit submit. When you post the reply, the artwork will be embedded. The one last thing that I would like you to do when you are checking this is that if you have access to your own files and you embed it you can see it no matter what so if your privacy settings are not set right you'll never know so what I'd like you to do is to copy the the link to the file open a new incognito window so you're not logged in to Google on incognito and paste if you still can see your image in incognito mode that means everyone in the class can see it and that you should feel confident to move on. Again, to wrap up, you are required to embed images in a discussion thread and attach .zip files to a project. You can do that by uh, doing it directly in Canvas or uploading your files to any file storage website. I recommend Google Drive, so please give it a try.